QuickBooks Online 2023. Entering data with bank fees while also using class tracking, projects, location tracking, tags, sub-customers, which used to be called jobs. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Back to the middle duplicated tab. Reports on the left side so we can open one of the faves, the balance sheet. As it's thinking, tap into the right, reports on the left, and this time we want the P, the L, the profit, the loss, the income, the statement. Closing the hand boogie, I'm going to change the range from 010123 to 123 and run it. Now I've cleaned out the reports by basically just going into the transaction detail or drilling down on the reports, zooming in to each transaction and deleting the transaction in our test company file so we have a fairly clean report. You don't necessarily need to do that for this practice problem. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. I'm going to tab to the left now and close the hand boogie, change the range 010123, 123 and run it. And let's go to the tab to the left. Now in prior presentations, we've been comparing and contrasting some of these added kind of features that are over and above just the double entry accounting system, most of which will be breaking out, say the income statement by columns giving us another dimension to look at, that being class tracking projects, location tracking tags, sub-customers, which used to be called jobs. We've turned those on now, so they're still on. So to turn the class tracking and location tracking on, you'll recall that's in the COGS menu up top, account and settings. Then we're down in the advanced settings, and you wanna go into the categories here. And we've got these two toggled on, basically the default settings as they are toggled on make sure that you save it before you hit done because sometimes i have noticed that i say done before i save it and it's actually not on it's off and it's quite frustrating because then the, the fields don't show up because i didn't hit the save button so make sure you hit the save button and don't just x out of it and then say done and do it properly so we have that set up we also know that the sub customers are linked to the customers. So if we think about the sub customers, just a quick review here, it's under uh, the sales tab and then our customers. And we set up our sub customers just by number. You can see it's a sub customer because it's indented here. You can add a sub customer by just saying new customer. And then you're going to make it a sub of some other customer like so. So we did that in the past. And so we've got those set up. So do you want to leave without saving? I do. That's the sub customer. And we know that the projects are over here on the left hand side. And those are kind of like the sub customers in that when you add a project, you're going to have to add them just as an example, project name needs to be tied to a customer. So like with the sub customers, they're tied to a customer. Now we've been thinking about what the data input looks like. Uh, as we do the data input, normal data input forms are found in the plus button, invoices, expense forms, and so on and so forth. Now, of course, we want to think about the bank feeds and just recognize where those fields will be located in the bank feeds. So, for example, if I go into an, a normal invoice, which would be in my accounting uh, cycle for billing a client, then we can see that we have the location tracking up here. 
which is just one location tracking for the entire transaction. That's how location tracking works. The tags are here, so I can add tags there. And then I've got the classes, which I can add here, line by line, breaking out in the bottom portion per line instead of one location for the entire transaction. And then we've got the uh, customer that we are gonna be adding in an invoice, which will be up top, customer, and sub-customer. Okay, so that's where everything's located on an invoice. And if we look at a standard expense form, then we know that the expense form has the location tracking similarly located here. We've got the class tracking similarly located down here. We've got the tags similarly located here. And then the customers and jobs uh, are an added field here where we can assign you know, customers and jobs possibly making the item, say, a billable type of item. So there we have that. Closing that out. Do you want to save and close? I do. Now, when I look at these transactions on the plus button here, and I think about the bank feeds, and we have whole a whole different course or section on bank feeds if you want to dive into how they integrate into your accounting system. But obviously, that's the cash side of things. If we're pulling the information in from the bank, you're going to have increases and decreases uh, to the checking account. So when you add the bank feeds, the standard forms being used are going to be a bit like an, an expense form or check form for the decreases. Uh, and But the format will look a little bit different on the bank feeds because we're pulling it in from the bank than a standard expense form. However, when we actually record them, they'll show up as basically like an expense form decreasing the, <clears throat> the checking account. The other transaction is generally going to be a deposit, those being increases to the checking account. And so we'll enter a deposit form. Now note, uh, when we're doing a full accounting cycle on the revenue generation form, we usually don't use a deposit. We usually use an invoice if it's an accrual concept or a on accrual system we're using or a sales receipt. But these two aren't normally what comes into the bank feeds because what comes into the bank feeds is just going to be simply the deposit uh, form generally. So, okay, so given that, we're going to go over to the bank feeds. So those are going to be located on the left-hand side, banking. And I've added just some test data so I can, I can uh, see some transactions down here in the bank feeds. Now, if you want to add test data to like, to, to, your, to, to your test file without actually connecting to the bank, you could connect to the bank or you could download transactions from your bank. Uh, or you can just make an Excel worksheet with transactions. So I just made an Excel worksheet here and it looks like this. Uh, so you can just create this if you if you would like. You need a date field, you need an amount field, you need a description, your amounts don't need to tie into my amounts exactly. But the idea is that we're gonna have increases and then decreases to the checking account. That's all the bank feeds are gonna be basically, increases and decreases to the checking account. And then we've got the description, which often includes information that allows us to pull in the customer and the vendor. It's not gonna be automatic, so we're gonna have to set up rules to kind of do that when we properly line up our bank feeds, but that's the general idea. Now you can't upload it as an Excel file. You have to save it as a C as CVS, CSV, CVS file. So in any case, you, how to do that, you go to the file tab up top, save as, and then browse and then instead of this being an excel file you want to make it a csv files which is a comma delimited delimited file which can open in excel but it's really just like a comma splice set of data that doesn't have any excel kind of formatting in it and then uh then you can you can go into that the the, the actual files look like this this is the excel file and this is the CSV file. If I right click on it and take a look at the properties of it, properties, then you can see it's a .csv file as opposed to this one over here. If I right click on it and say the properties, this is uh, an Excel, a .xl uh, sx file. So it's pretty easy to do that. And then you can, you know, you can upload some data into your system into the bank feeds and and do work with it. And then when you're in QuickBooks here, the way to get that data into the system is you're gonna hit, instead of a link 
you just upload from the file and then you can drag your data file in here and you can tell it which account you want to assign the uploaded data to and here's the formats that can be used one of them being that dot csv file okay so once we have data in our system then notice all we're really going to have are going to is going to be money coming in and money going out that's what the checking account has so for example this one is going to be a money going out the description i have vendor five usually it's not going to have the name of the vendor as just the name of the vendor it might have other stuff in it as well in like the memo section but if it's a bank fee transaction then it might include data that will have the vendor in it making it easy for us to record this so if i was to record this into the bank feeds and then add the class tracking and, and the projects and all the other stuff. Let's see where it is located. Now, if I go to the first categorized field, it doesn't look like an expense type form, but it basically is an expense type form. We also could match it. We could have a transfer, but usually if it's going to be a decrease, it's going to go to this category. And although it doesn't look like an expense type form, that's basically what we're using here. I can then say from the memo, I'm going to say this is going to make a new vendor, which I'm going to call vendor five from the memo, saving it. Then we're going to record it to our expense category transaction. So let's say it was for utilities or whatever. And then uh, the customer field, this is where we would assign either. This is where we would assign either the project or the sub customer. So the sub customers you can see are indicated by the indentations of the numbers and the projects I set up as projects. So let's pick a project here and then we could make it billable. So we have that billable setting, which allows us to pull it into the invoice uh, if we so choose, just to remind us where that billable setting is. If I right click and duplicate the tab, it's in the settings up top and then it's in the accounting and settings under the expenses tab. And then I said billable items and we have the billable items turned on here. So now we have that showing up in our bank feeds as well, which is nice. I'm going to say done and let's close that back out. All right. And so then we have the location tracking, which shows up here so I can pick a location for the entire transaction, similar to with the expense form. I've got the class tracking so I can say business subclass one, let's say, and I have the tags. So tags show up in a similar kind of area. And then that's the general feel of it. Now you might be saying, hey, wait a second. What if I need to record multiple categories of the transaction? Let's open this up again. I'm gonna duplicate and compare this to like an expense form here. And I go up top and go new. This is basically like an expense form that's coming in through the bank feeds. And if I was to mirror this, it would look like this. I did, what did I do? Vendor five, checking account. Uh, and then I said location was here. And then I said uh, the category was utilities, utilities. And then let's just say, I'll just put an amount in this one. And then I said it was billable. And then I used the sub customer of project and I assigned it to a class, but what if I had two different classes I needed to assign it out to? So maybe I had utilities account here and this was for 500 or whatever. And I needed to assign it possibly to a different project, even maybe, and to a different class. And this one's going to go to B2. So, so now I've got these two line items here. How do I do that over here? Well, then I've got to go to the split. I can go to the split item here. And I can say now I've got vendor California and here's my utilities and I can go to utilities again, utilities, and I can assign it to uh, a different class. I had this in class one and class two, and I could assign it to a different customer or sub customer and I could make it billable. And this is going to be, let's say 20 and 10. So that splits out between the two in like a similar fashion. So let's go ahead and uh, apply and accept. 
And so there we have that. If I go into my reports then and run it, I'm into my balance sheet now, and I go into my checking account, we're gonna say, all right, did it record the transaction? Uh, the $30 vendor five, there it is. Now, if I go into this form, it shows me the expense form, right? Which is looking like the form that I, that I was building over here to kind of mirror it. So we've got the utilities, utilities, there's your class tracking, your project, your, uh, your classes, your projects, your location, and your tags. I didn't add a, a, a tag again, but there's your tags. So <laughs> save and close. So now you can do all the sorting of it. If we check this out, if I go uh, exit and I go up top and I say I can sort it now by locations, boom. And so now I've got California and uh, Nevada, only one location was I able to assign because that's how locations work. But if I go to the classes, then now I've got my my two that I assigned the class out, but it didn't break it out on the balance sheet because re remember the balance sheet is a little bit, a little bit tricky. It's mainly the income statement that works quite well with these tools. And then if I break it out by customer, that's where it breaks out the projects and the jobs. But mainly we want to see that on the profit and loss. Let's go to the P and L. Do the same thing. If I go to the P and L, there's our utilities at the bottom. If I break it out by classes, boom. Now you've got it broken out by, by the class, the 10 and the 20, the 20 and the 10. I could see it by locations, do, 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 locations, run it. And so now we have, we put that in the California location. We can see it by uh, customers, which will be the breakout used typically for both the projects and the class tracking. And then remember when you do tags, I'm gonna right click and duplicate again. You often wanna do the tags from the tags field, which you could find in the banking and then go to tags. And then you can run your, run your report from the tags. So now I've got my item here. I could run my report and I can take it from 0101232. 123123 and run it. And so there you've got your your tag item. So the data input fields are basically there, but they they look a little bit different. Let's do another one. Uh, do you want to leave without saving? I'm going to say yes. And this one notice on the sales side, usually we, we would like to enter an invoice or a sales receipt. But remember, when you pull in the bank feeds, the form is typically going to be a deposit form. So you got to think about how that's going to work fit into your your billing system. Do you want to match the deposit or do you want to enter the deposits as basically income at the point in time they come in from the bank feeds. But on this deposit form, you can see you've got your tag fields up top here. You've got uh, the the classes are here that we can assign a class to and uh, the locations are up top so we've got the location and then uh those are going to be the and then re received from this is where you you've got your subclasses and your projects so let's mirror that over here and i could say okay let's say i do a deposit type of item and so so the this would be a received i put v vendor it should be a customer i would think Here's a customer one. Let's do this one. And we're going to say this is going to be customer number one or customer two. So I'll put that in here. There's customer number two. Uncategorized is going to be some kind of income typically uh, that we're going to assign it to unless we're matching it up to an invoice or a sales receipt. So we'll talk more about that on the bank feeds item. But if I'm using the deposits, so we've talked about this in our bank feed course or section. But if you're using deposits to record revenue, then you might put this to like sales. So we'll say sales, uh, sales account, product sales, okay. Here's your location. I'll say Nevada this time, here's your class. But the class once again is only be assigned to the whole thing because we only see one 
uh, line item, you know, thus far. You've got your tags down here. So let's pick a tag. Let's pick a couple tags. And uh, and there it is. Now, now the customer, notice I picked customer two, but if it was a sub customer or something like that, then this is where you'd pick basically the sub customer to be breaking out the sub customer. If you had splits, then you can use your split item in a similar fashion so you can break out multiple sales categories for the deposit side of things. I'm gonna close that, that out. And then of course, you could create a rule and it will help you to automate the system. So let's see if all these kind of things, classes, projects and whatnot are in the rules so I can automatically assign all that stuff as we go. So let's say this is gonna be for a uh, customer. I'm gonna call the rule customer two because that's what's in the description. It's gonna be a money in rule in the checking account. And I'm gonna say that the, I usually choose bank text because I find it to be more uh, useful or precise oftentimes. And I'm gonna say it contains customer number two. So when it sees customer number two, that's when it's gonna apply the rule. If I, if I test out the rule, there's only one item that currently meets that condition, which makes sense. And then we've got the uh, transaction type as a deposit sale of product income. That's the income account, the payee. I'm putting it to that sub job. So that's going to be our, our job area. And here's our tags field. So the tags will be automatically applied. The class will be automatically. But notice that if you wanted to split it, then you'd have to, you've, you've got some more options up here in the split area. Uh, so you have that. And then the location tracking is one location for the entire transaction. And so there we have it. So let's go ahead and add this one. And so now if I go back on over to my reports on the balance sheet, let's run it. And let's just look at it by total over here. So if I run the balance sheet and I go into my checking account and drill down on the checking account, we added this one customer number two. Let's scroll up and let's just take a look at the profit and loss this time. And so if I run my profit and loss and run it, then once again, I can break this out by the, the various, the various tools we've been working with, which are the classes. So now it's breaking out by class on the income side of things. And then we're going to go to the location and it broke out by income on the location. And then you've got your customers which breaks out the jobs and sub customers and then again with the tags uh normally i would run the report from the tags area might be the best way to do it and then you can basically do your uh filtering by your tags over here and so we can run by the tags all right let's go back to the first tab again and let's add another uh another vendor this would be like an expense or money out and just add a rule with it just so we can see what the rule looks like. So this is going to be vendor one. It's going to utilities again. Let's say this was, let's say this is going to go to supplies, supplies. And then I'm going to assign it to this time. Let's pick, pick a uh, job or sub customer. We're going to make it billable. It's going to go to location, uh, Nevada, the class I'm going to assign will be personal, let's say this time. Tags, let's pick a couple tags that we can assign out and boom. And there we have it. So I'm not gonna split it this time, but instead just go to create the rule. I want a rule. There's gotta be rules here. There's gotta be some rules. Can't have anarchy crying out loud. It's a money out. So we're gonna say, description i'll pick the bank text again contains vendor one if i test it then it's picking up two transactions it's going to pick up with this rule okay expenses it's going to go to the supplies account the payee the customer this is where we're choosing the sub customer this time that's where you pick the sub customer or job so i can run the sales report by sub customer or job it's picking up the tags it's picking up the class, but it's applying the class to the full transaction. If I wanted more detail, I can go to the splits. And then I've got my location, Nevada. 
and then uh, that looks good. So let's notice it's auto adding too. So it's going to add them automatically. If I turn that off, by the way, and I save this, then it first gives me another little check before it adds it, which is kind of neat or good when you first start out. But I'll, but then you're going to probably auto add them because it's super fast to do it that way. And then your rules are being created over here. Boom. Rules. You can adjust your rules if you so choose. If I pull that into my balance sheet, it's just so cool. I don't know how, there's no other word to describe it. Anyways, so those pulled in. And then I'm going to go on the expense side and exit this profit and loss. Run it. We can see it by all the various stuff, locations, for example, por ejemplo, uh, we had locations for the supplies and then we had the class tracking, class tracking for uh, the supplies. We had then breaking it out by customers. So we had by location or, or the uh, a job and then of course you can do it by tags again so if I go back to the tab to the left one more one more thing is that you can obviously you can think about the rules and then add the splits so let's do one more money out which is more likely where you're gonna add you know the splits to have multiple classes for example vendor let's say this time vendor 3 is gonna go to do I have any other I have a miscellaneous expense Vendor 3 is very mysterious. <laughs> we put them into miscellaneous. This is going to be project project uh, 2 or 1, let's say. Billable location. Let's just choose this location. Let's say this is business 2 or whatever. Tags, boom. Tags, boom. And then I'm going to create a rule with it. And this is going to be vendor 3 rule money out and all i like choosing text vendor three does it match up to anything one transaction muy b to the n bn expense miscellaneous vendor all right tags are being applied location but i want to split out that location possibly by by line item so i can hit the split button and then we've got some options uh for for splitting out the transaction so on a percent or dollar amount basis if you're going to do a rule for it then you might need like a percent breakout so it can kind of automatically break it out oftentimes so let's say it's going to be 40 percent miscellaneous and it goes to class two or let's just say straight up business and then let's say it's going to be uh uh this should be 40 and this is going to be 60 60 percent this also goes to miscellaneous but we're choosing a separate class which is going to be personal so you can set up your rules something like that vendor project and uh so that's the general that's the general setup so let's save it and close it and check it out and so there's our split rule that we put into what's the expense account miscellaneous it's the mysterious miscellaneous profit and loss run it and uh we're gonna check it out by class boom and then in the miscellaneous it broke out the classes there beautifully so so that's how so the class tracking is pretty all these tools class tracking, projects, location tracking, tags, sub-customers, which used to be known as jobs, are, are pretty, you can utilize them pretty well uh, using the bank feeds to kind of help you to integrate and automate your transactions. It's gonna look a little bit different in the bank feeds, but remember that the bank feeds are basically recording for the most part, the same, do you wanna leave, the same transactions from this window but it's only the banking transactions which means deposits are usually the forms for increases and the expense form or check forms usually expense forms because they're electronic transfers would be the decrease to the checking account but the data input windows look a little bit different 
but but you do have a they're done a pretty good job to have a lot of flexibility to add all these this added level of uh, complexity for breaking out mainly the income statement with the class tracking projects, location tracking, tags, sub-customers, which used to be known as jobs.